Today we're going to look at the reaction of magnesium with nitrogen in the air. And this is an experiment which in one of our videos I said I had tried for 25 years in front of the students and it had never worked. Out of the blue I got an email from a viewer called Carsten in Germany who said he had a book of experiments in German and he told us how to do it. The difference is that this experiment uses magnesium granules and I was using magnesium ribbon. The experiment consists of making a little pyramid of magnesium granules, setting fire to them in air so it begins to burn making magnesium oxide and then taking a big beaker and putting it upside down over the magnesium which is already burning. And of course, because the beaker contains air, it continues to burn, making magnesium oxide, but it uses up the oxygen inside the beaker so that the beaker just contains nitrogen. As the magnesium is already very hot, it starts burning in nitrogen or reacting with nitrogen. It's quite slow. I thought the reaction wasn't going to happen and then sparks starts coming from this little pyramid and then it starts glowing brighter and brighter and a plume comes out like an erupting volcano and it reacts until most of the nitrogen is used up and as it starts reacting with the nitrogen you get a blue-green colour in the flame. I'm not sure what that is. It might be from nitrogen atoms recombining, which give a green colour. But the reaction eventually finishes. Neil got a big glove and removed the beaker. It was very hot. The pyramid was white on the outside with magnesium oxide, but when he cut it in half with a spatula, inside it was some black from the unreacted magnesium, but yellow colour which is magnesium nitride, Mg3N2. But then comes the really exciting part. You can react the magnesium nitride with water and it forms ammonia, which as you know is a gas and is alkaline if it touches something that is wet. So Neil tried some indicator paper that goes a sort of bluish colour when you have an alkali and phenolphthalein paper which starts white and goes blood red. And they both worked. The second time, it worked better. Neil was considerably more satisfied and we got a bigger plume and the magnesium nitride was definitely more apparent at the end. We did the water and got the colours. It's quite interesting that if you look under the thermal camera, the indicator papers actually warm up when the ammonia or the hot vapours touch it. So the interesting question is, why did my experiment never work and Karsten's experiment succeed? My experiment consisted of taking a piece of magnesium ribbon, lighting it in air and then plunging it into a container filled with nitrogen gas. It just went out. I think the difference was that my magnesium ribbon wasn't nearly as hot as the mass of magnesium granules that Neil was using. This is a reaction which has high activation energy. You need to put in a lot of heat to get it going and I just didn't have the thing hot enough. There's the other chemical question why does magnesium ever react with nitrogen? Because N2 gas has the strongest bond that is known between two atoms that are the same. The NN bond is very strong. To break that bond is why the reaction needs so much heat to get going. But in a chemical reaction for it to work, you may have to put heat in, but you need to get more heat out to make the whole process Go. And what happens in this case is that you form magnesium 2 plus ions and nitride 3 minus ions, both of which are quite small 
and which have a high charge, plus 2, minus 3. And the energy when these come together, positive and negative attract. And when they come together in a lattice, you get a lot of energy back. And the closer the ions come together, the greater the energy. So having small ions with a high charge gives you a lot of energy back. The problem with the demonstration we've done was that you don't see whether the oxygen has been used up in the air. It could just be burning. So I persuaded Neil to do a third experiment in a bigger beaker. But the beaker was big enough that we could also have a candle burning under the beaker. So now we could use the candle like a canary used to be used down coal mines to see when the air was running out. And if you watch, you can see they both start burning, both the candle and the magnesium. And as the process goes on, the candle starts getting smaller and smaller and goes out. But the magnesium keeps going, it takes a bit of time to get going, and then the plume of the volcano reappears. And at the end, we got really quite a nice amount of magnesium nitride, this yellow solid. And the amount of ammonia was impressive. The heat of the reaction melted one side of the candle, which was quite satisfying. But Neil, who often is cleverer than me, pointed out that this experiment was not perfect because when the candle burnt, it produced carbon dioxide and water vapour, which accumulates inside the beaker. So we were actually changing the chemistry, or potentially as well. Now the one question that we haven't answered is why did the beaker fill with white smoke? And I think the answer to that is that the white smoke is actually very finely divided magnesium oxide. And you see the same white smoke when you let off fireworks, which often contain magnesium, and they produce magnesium oxide. But overall, it was a very satisfying experiment. And I thank you, Carsten, for putting us onto it. Have a look at the link in the video description to find out about becoming a Patreon supporter and getting your name on our periodic table of patrons, like these people here. I'll also put a link in the video description to recent news about our very own senior technician, Neil Barnes, who's won a very impressive honour from the Royal Society. Make sure you have a click on that.